Welcome back to Tuesdays with Tim, the podcast that touches on all things related to brain injuries among children and those who've been impacted by my son, Luke. Today, I'm going to be sharing stories about Patrick Mahomes and two stories that I think will really touch you. I first want to talk about Patrick Mahomes. Two days ago, of course, he led the Kansas City Chiefs to a big victory on the road, the first road playoff victory for the Chiefs in the Patrick Mahomes era. And the reason of why I want to talk about Patrick Mahomes is because of what he meant to Luke and what he still means to Luke. We used to watch Patrick when he was with the Texas Tech Red Raiders quarterbacking our team. And I remember Luke on the sidelines at practice watching Patrick and was just in awe of him. And he loved everything about him. And Luke really enjoyed watching practices. He was focused. He was intense. He was so impressed with the passes. And I just, I'll never forget that. On the corner of the end zone, on the grass practice field. Fast forward to after the accident, I stayed away from Texas Tech for nearly a year. Texas Tech was, to me, a place that was before the accident. It was life before the accident. And so the accident was on July 28th of 2015 when Luke was in a golf cart accident. And it wasn't until the fall of 2016 that I was invited by former Texas Tech football coach Cliff Kingsbury to come to practice with Luke. When I arrived at practice, Coach Kingsbury had every single player on the team, one by one, kind of put his hand up and kind of high five Luke. And the last person was Patrick Mahomes. And I spent a few minutes with Patrick after that. And it was just so heartwarming. I could tell how much Luke meant to Patrick and how much I know Patrick meant to Luke. And then later that season, the Red Raiders were playing against Baylor at Cowboy Stadium. And We went down in the hallway um, before the game and met Patrick and took a picture with Patrick uh, before the game, and that was just so special. And and once again, I could tell how much Luke meant and how much Patrick meant to Luke. Luke's eyes were open, and I was just so impressed with Patrick. I knew what a great person he was, but I'm going to soon tell you uh, and confirm that even more so. So... Right before Patrick left for the Chiefs, he asked me to give him some Team Luke Hope for Minds gear and Team Luke Hope for Minds bracelets, and he told me that he would wear them. Well, every single game Patrick plays, he wears that bracelet on his right wrist. So when you're watching this weekend, this Sunday, when the Chiefs play the Baltimore Ravens, look closely and you'll see a black and green bracelet that says Team Luke Hope for Minds. He never takes it off with his family, with all of his commercials. It's there, plain as day. And that is just so special for me to know that he is wearing one of, I believe, three bracelets on his right wrist. About 10 days after Luke passed, Patrick Mahomes was dedicating a park in Kansas City. In this video, Patrick shares that he dedicated this park because of my son, Luke. I go through people that I want to thank. I think about a, a, a little kid that I, um, that, I, that I met when I was at my time at Texas Tech. His name was Luke Siegel. He kind of helped me form the vision for what 15 of the Mahomes was. Uh, it, it, uh, it's different because Luke actually passed away about a week and a half ago. He, he, he was such an impact in my life, and I want to make sure his family knows that this part comes from him. It comes from him and what had the impact that he made with me. I keep in touch with Patrick through text messages, and one text message that I received from Patrick I will never forget. A couple of years ago, the Chiefs were playing in New England, and I saw that Patrick was sacked, and I could tell that the bracelet was sort of twisted. I get a text about an hour after the game. He said, he said Tim, I need some bracelets. I can't play a game without these bracelets, and so I gave him plenty. So look forward to watching that on Sunday. Last weekend, right before the Chiefs played against 
the Miami Dolphins, ESPN ran a story. And that story was about Patrick Mahomes being nominated for the Walter Payton Man of the Year. Each team nominates one player. Patrick Mahomes started a, non, a, a foundation called 15 and the Mahomes. And he helps children all over the Kansas City area. He's doing remarkable things with his foundation. And during this interview on ESPN, Patrick Mahomes mentions my son Luke again, saying that basically he started his foundation because of Luke. And there's a picture with Luke and Patrick and, and what he said about Luke and the, and the spirit that Luke has. Listen to this video. It will touch your heart. You don't know which kid's going to impact the world in, the, in a positive way, and you want to make sure every kid has those opportunities. Kansas City special. They care about you more than just being a football player. They care about you uh, as a person. They've taken my foundation to new levels. 15 of my homies is a foundation that I helped found, but we wanted to help our kids any way possible. It's been really cool to see how the, the community has embraced it, and it's already passed my wildest imagination. It started actually in Lubbock. I met a, a kid named Luke Siegel who got in a golf cart accident, became disabled. And I knew how much spirit that he had before and how he was still fighting for that battle every single day. Luke lost that battle a few years ago. I knew from that day on that I wanted to help kids get every opportunity as fast as they can so they can make an impact in the world and in their life and in their family's lives. Patrick is one of a few athletes that has really meant the world to me. In December 20 of 2020, the... Kansas City Chiefs were playing at the New Orleans Saints, Luke's two favorite quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes and Drew Brees. ESPN ran a story that day, and it's called A Father, A Son, and Their Saints. But we've also had many other athletes who have meant so much to me and so much to Team Luke Hope for Minds. Luke loved baseball. Luke loved the Texas Rangers. And Elvis Andrews, the former shortstop for the Rangers, sent videos to us. We met him in the clubhouse. Elvis also donated $100 for every hit that he got in 2020. Andre Agassi, one of the greatest tennis players of all time. He's, he's, he is even a better person than he is a tennis player. He has done events for us. I keep in touch with Andre all the time. Andy Roddick, also a former number one tennis player in the world, is actually coming to Lubbock, Texas on April 3rd to speak. He did an event for us as well. I can go on and on about Drew Brees. Drew Brees will be coming up in the next month on my podcast talking about the impact that Luke has made. Drew came to Lubbock to do an event, and we keep in touch with, with Drew all the time. So those, those are just a few of the athletes that, that mean the world to us. But when it comes to meaning the world to us, I want to share a couple of stories with you that just exemplifies the importance in what we do at Team Luke Hope for Minds. This year in 2024, Team Luke Hope for Minds hopes to raise as much money as we possibly can so that no family, not one family, doesn't get our help. We currently have over 75 families on a waiting list. Last year, we granted over $525,000 to families all over the country. We are currently in 47 states. Last year, in Austin, we had our Ma Making Connections Pediatric Brain Injury Conference where we hosted 120 families from 27 states, and we scholarshiped 75 of those families. Everywhere I go, in Lubbock, Texas, and elsewhere, people come up to me to talk about my son Luke, about the impact that Luke is making on their family, but also about Team Luke Hope for Minds. We support children in so many ways, financial support, education, free counseling, support groups online, and our pediatric brain injury conference. Every time I get on the airplane, I make sure that I at least take a couple of my books with me and a brochure because you never know. I never know who I might meet. Last June 18th, which happened to be on Father's Day, I was flying in the evening from Dallas to Austin. I was sitting at the gate, waiting for my flight, and a woman next to me was sitting there. 
And I said, I asked her, what are you doing in Austin? She told me she was going to a conference. I then asked, where is she from? And she told me she was from Kansas City. Her name is Christina. And when that happened, of course, I opened up my phone. I showed her all the pictures of Luke and Patrick and how much Patrick means to Luke. I told her that Patrick wears the bracelet, that Patrick and I keep in touch, and that Patrick Mahomes is an incredible human being. And she was very touched by that. And I handed her my book. About two weeks ago, I received an email from Christina that her son Cooper had suffered a concussion while practicing at Wheaton College in basketball. This, just, this was just not another type of concussion. She had told me in the email that he was struggling, and this happened in October, but that he was struggling with vision, with hearing, with talking, with walking, everything. It was a basically a brain injury, which is what a concussion is. But this was a very severe concussion. I asked her to call me. The next day she did, and I talked to her and her husband. And she told me that because of the fact that I gave her my book and talked about Team Luke for Minds, she did research. And she and Cooper were in Minnesota last week doing a five-day intensive to help him with therapies. I just spoke to her yesterday, and he's making significant progress. So this is an example of why I bring that book and my brochure on that airplane, and I do this every single time. I've had a woman sit next to me telling me that she wants to donate because I gave her my book. And so it's very special for me to share with what we do at Team Luke Hope for Minds. Last week, I received a phone call from a nurse at Cooper Central Elementary where my three children went to school. She had told me about a little girl named Kat who was 10 years, ago, 10 years old who had suffered some headaches and had some symptoms recently and noticed that her eyes weren't the same. She was sent directly to the ER. At that time, they had done emergency surgery to remove a mass from her brain. <clears throat> I reached out to her father, Tommy, and that afternoon, prior to my departing for an airplane to New York to do an event, I went to the hospital and I visited with Kat and her parents. And walking into the ICU, my heart was beating faster. Why? Because this was the exact same ICU where Luke was. First time I had been there in eight and a half years. In a matter of 15, 20 seconds, I looked around and I remember vividly what I was doing in certain positions, certain places, on the ground, talking to doctors, my anxiety, it all came flooded back. And I asked where this little girl was in the ICU. And they took me to the room and I paused before going into the room because that was the exact same room where Luke was in the ICU. When I sat in that room talking to the parents, as Kat was sitting uncomfortably, wasn't able to speak, I could tell that she was listening. And when her mom said to her that Luke was in this exact same room and that you're going to fight just like Luke, she started to cry. My tears also came down my cheeks. I couldn't believe that A, they were in the exact same room, and B, that this little girl knew exactly what happened to Luke. And I have been so touched uh, by this family. She's making tremendous progress. But it's just another example of, of what we are doing as an organization to help families. And in this case, and really in both cases, in both of these stories, it's not about what I helped the families financially. It's what I did for those families to give them hope, but also just to give them education and to let them know what we do. Team Luke Hope for Minds is my passion, my mission, my calling, my responsibility. And I remember talking about this last weekend when I gave my talk in Utica, New York, and that what I'm doing, I'm doing this for families and for Luke. 
that I'm keeping Luke's legacy alive and that I was always so convinced that Luke was going to speak. But then I paused and I said, Luke is speaking. He's speaking through me. You know, I used to coach Luke, whether it was through baseball or football or even on the tennis court. I was reminded last week that Luke is coaching me. He's giving me the strength to keep going. And without my strength from Luke, without my strength, without my faith from God, I don't know that I could keep going. But I do know this, and I will close here. I am blessed. I'm grateful. I am focused for the rest of my life to help families whose children had a brain injury. As I said, Team Luke Hope for Minds is my mission. Quite often I'm asked, how can I help? We are looking for volunteers, doing research for events. Follow us on teamlukehopeforminds.org at our website. And if you are interested or you know friends that might be interested, interested in donating to Team Luke Hope for Minds, you can go to our website, teamlukehopeforminds.org, and donate. Thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you very much for listening today. This has been Tuesdays with Tim.